Hi, it's Dwyer, RichardDwyer.com. I'm a civil attorney in Northern California, and from time to time I comment on cases in the news. Now, I made a video that has led to a lot of blowback here online. I believe the number of negative ratings I have, and that's fair, on that video are nine as I'm making this response video. Right In the video, I argued that Scott Peterson, who was convicted of murder, who currently sits on California's death row, right, should not have been convicted because the prosecution, in my opinion, didn't come close to the legal standard of proving his guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. Right? Understand, we have a legal burden of proof. If we're jurors looking at that case, you have to feel, as you sit in the jury box, that the prosecution has removed all reasonable doubt, all of it, regarding any question as to the defendant's guilt. Now here, quite frankly, the evidence is consistent. It's at least equally consistent with Lacey having been abducted while walking the family pet. So, many of you have raised the argument, and let's address it head on here, that Scott didn't tell anyone about the boat that he had. Right? Didn't tell anyone. But yet, a strand or two of Lacey's here was found in a set of pliers on the boat. So for many of you commenting on the case, right, let's pretend we're all in the jury room and we're discussing it. That's the smoking gun. That's the aha moment. If Lacey didn't know about the boat, how could a strand or two of her hair be on the pliers in the boat? Now let me uh, make a few points here. What we need to do is we need to separate the reports that we hear about cases like this from well-meaning commentators on shows like, let's say, Dateline or 48 Hours or 2020. We need to separate right, people's opinions from the actual evidence right from the actual police reports. Now first, let me highlight this. The folklore, and it's folklore, is that Scott didn't tell a person that he knew about the boat. Would it surprise you to know that Scott discussed his desire to get a boat with three of his friends who all spoke to the police? Right? Let me give you their names. Guy Milagy, Jody Milagy, and Brian Ulrich. Right? In the months before Lacey goes missing, understand it's no secret among Scott's friends, at least among these friends, that Scott's thinking about getting a boat. Let me add this too. It's another boat, right? Because this isn't the first boat Scott's owned in his life. It's not the second boat Scott's owned in his life. Folks, it's not the third boat Scott's owned in his life. This is the fourth boat. The fourth boat that Scott Peterson owned in his life. The fourth. Right? Just food for thought. Let me say this too. You may have heard that Scott paid for the boat in cash. Folks, the reason why he paid for the boat in cash is because the seller, by the seller's own admission, wanted cash for the boat. Right? Sometimes when you buy an auto or a boat, the seller gets to dictate the terms. The seller here said, hey, I want cash. 
You want to know where Scott got the cash to buy the boat? He literally got the cash bank record, show this, out of the joint checking account that he shared with Lacey Peterson. Right? And so this isn't a secret boat. This isn't even Scott's first boat. And this isn't a boat that Scott's trying to hide from Lacey Peterson. Scott pays $1,400 for the boat. Folks, don't get the feeling that this boat's a yacht. No, this is a relatively small boat. Understand, there's an open question on whether Scott Peterson could have balanced himself in the boat and tossed the body off the boat without the boat capsizing. Understand, the prosecution wasn't able to show a reenactment of the crime. Understand, there are failed reenactments of the crime. Right? Can we agree, too, that the Bay Area Right? Where the body's found. The water is choppy. Right? This is a $1,400 used boat. It's the first time Scott has taken this particular boat with him into the water. Right? Lacey weighs more than 100 pounds. If you stand up in a boat and you don't know what you're doing and you try to pick up, a 100 plus pound item or person and that boat is rocking at all you could easily capsize right the prosecution made the argument that Scott dumps Lacey off the boat the prosecution made that argument without showing the jury a reenactment of the alleged crime right now let's talk about the hair. It's amazing how smoking gun evidence to one juror could underscore the weakness of the case to another. Right? I can tell you from personal experience. You see here, I'm a bald man. But I'll often have hair on my jackets. I'll have hair on my clothing. Right? Because I live with my kids, I live with my girl, right? And their hair often ends up on me. Right? I have a little baby. When I hold the baby, guess what? Sometimes I'm left with hair on me. I have a cat. I've even had clients of mine laugh and say, You must own a cat. And when I say, How could you tell? They'll point to cat here on my leg. So, understand, Lacey wouldn't have to have been on the boat, ever, for her here to have gotten on the boat. Understand, too, that it's an open question in this case whether it's one strand of hair or two strands of hair. Right? This here easily could have gotten on Scott. And Scott, just by being on the boat, could have carried the hair with him onto the boat. Think about your car. Right? If you and, let's say, the teenager in the house drives the car and your wife drives the car, Aren't there times when you're in the car and you notice here in that car that's not yours? Let's talk about the hair on the pliers. It sounds provocative, doesn't it? Right? Oh, there was hair on the pliers. Interestingly enough, there's no other body tissue on the pliers. Right? It's not like they found a lot of, you know, flesh and, you know, items on the pliers that come from Lacey Peterson. No, they found one or two strands of hair. Folks, that's it. 
right? That's it. Her hair could easily have been the hair of their pet. If you're a dog owner, you know you're carrying around your pet's hair. Had they found the dog's hair on the boat, would you have argued that the dog was on the boat with Scott Peterson? Even if the amount of hair that they found were only two strands at most, with no other parts of Lacey's body, right? It's not two hairs plus a lot of scalp and stuff like that. No, it's two hairs at most, right? There's an argument that it was one strand that may have broken apart in police custody, right? So let's dispel a few other thoughts. Right? The prosecution wants you to believe that Scott Peterson made a bunch of concrete anchors that he used to weigh down Lacey's body. Understand, Lacey's body doesn't come to the surface for several months. Something's weighing down Lacey's body. Would it surprise you to know that the evidence is also consistent? with Scott having made one concrete anchor for the small $1,400 boat, right? You buy a boat, you say, okay, I need an anchor for this boat, right? Scott poured some concrete into a bucket, right? The evidence is consistent with one anchor being made. I know the prosecution's arguing for four. Understand, I want you here on Google to look up the facts of this case. Right? The police found evidence that Scott had made at least one concrete anchor. In my opinion, the rest is the prosecution theorizing on how this could have gone down without having adequate evidence. Let me point out too that Scott claimed that he used the boat for fishing. Would it surprise you to know that the boat was actually equipped for fishing? Folks, the prosecution concedes this, right? It's a small boat equipped for fishing. Somehow Scott is supposed to have fit his wife on the boat with multiple anchors, right? Think about it, that he is able to throw over the side without capsizing the boat. Let me leave you with this. Did you know that this boat was such a secret Right? Obviously, according to the prosecution, Scott must have bought this boat with the idea of killing his wife. Right? He gets the boat in December of 2002. Right? This boat was such a secret that did you know as soon as Scott got the boat, he registered the boat on December the 9th, 2002 with the DMV? He gave his name. He gave his actual address? Folks, this secret boat, the one that he's keeping a secret from everyone, supposedly, the one that he, you know, uh, the one that he registers with the DMV, that he talks about getting with three of his friends before he gets it, right? The prosecution wants you to believe that this is a secret boat. When all anyone would have to do is go down to the DMV to find out who its owner was. Right? Understand too, when Scott meets with the seller of the boat to get the boat, Scott gives the seller his actual name. Scott gives the seller his actual address. Now if this is the best the prosecution has, right? No one knew about this boat. Lacey's hair is on the boat. 
Scott paid cash for the boat. If this is the best the prosecution has, then how do you fashion this into a murder conviction that carries the death penalty? Right? I encourage you to look closely at the evidence that the prosecution has about Scott supposedly making more than one anchor. Where do they get that from? This is a high profile case. Did they find the additional anchors in the bay? If they didn't find the anchors, if they don't have a photo of these additional anchors, if they don't have a witness who saw these additional anchors, how confident are you that these anchors ever existed? Right? And so, as I've said before, I'm not here arguing that Scott didn't do the crime. Right? What I'm saying to you is the prosecution hasn't proven it. Either we're going to require the prosecution to prove guilt beyond a reasonable doubt, or we're not. Right? My point to you is, if you are going to demand in a criminal case that the prosecution meet it meets its burden of proof. I don't believe they did so here. Anyway, that's how I see it. If there's another part of the Peterson case that you want us to discuss that you feel clearly points to his guilt, I hope you leave that in the comment section to this video. And keep in mind too, I'm really here to spur discussion. This isn't a cult. I certainly don't want to be a cult leader, right? This isn't, you know, the free Scott Peterson page of the internet, right? No, what I'm trying to do is to just make sure that in these big cases, we're holding police departments and prosecution teams accountable, right? Because quite frankly, I don't want anyone who might be innocent, who the prosecution has not proven their guilt beyond a reasonable doubt, rotting away in prison. There was a media frenzy when this case went down a little bit more than 10 years ago. When you look at the evidence, you're going to be shocked at how thin it is. Let me point out, too, that the defense was able to introduce several instances, again, several instances, where Scott and Lacey bought items and did not tell family members about it. Right here, Scott's clearly not trying to hide the purchase of the boat from Lacey, because, of course, he pays for it using a joint account. Right? And so the argument that no one knew about this boat, that this is some part of Scott's secret life, that he has this boat, somehow hides it skillfully, then takes it out to, you know, dispose of his wife's body. I don't think that passes the smell test when <laughs> he registers the boat with DMV. Anyway, let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments for me here online, and I hope you continue to visit with further comments on other videos going forward. Thanks for stopping by.